God is not interested in coexisting with the devil. God is not interested in sharing territory with the enemy. One of them has to go. Light cannot mix with darkness, the scripture tells us that. The kingdom of God will require faith in order to manifest it. Now faith by its nature is forceful. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here on The Kingdom in You with me, Apostle Abraham. Now, we've been discussing a lot of issues concerning the fivefold ministry, and we're so glad that you could be a part of this television show. Uh, I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You get all the latest teachings, and they're absolutely free, and you can listen to them over and over again. So when we're dealing with the office of the prophet, we're going to be dealing with one of the most important offices uh, that is known today especially here in Africa, the office of the prophet is something that a lot of people speak about and a lot of people look for. There's prophet who and prophet who and prophet who, and people are going to different prophets. Uh, but what does this mean? What does it mean when we speak about the office of the prophet? And most of the time, if you ask any Christian, what would you like to be? What office would you like to be? Most of them say, I want to be a prophet uh, because of the stories I believe that we've read in the Word of God that speak about uh, prophets just moving in such weird and wonderful dimensions in the Spirit of God. Amen. So, the word prophet, what does it mean? From the word prophetess, prophetess, from the Greek word actually, it simply means one who speaks for another. Okay, so when we talk about a prophet, we're simply speaking about anyone who speaks for another. Now, the word in the Hebrew is called nebai. And the word nebai means the bubble forth, you know, like a fountain. So we can define the prophet simply as the one who announces or pours forth the declarations of God. He speaks on behalf of God or she speaks on behalf of God. I want to speak to you today about the type of prophets. All right. When we talk about the type of prophets, really we're speaking about the four different ways by which prophets are able to hear the word of God. Remember, the main function of a prophet is to hear what God is saying. Now, the word hear, as you're going to begin to see, means different things. It simply means one who receives communication. Now, prophets are hearers. Okay, There are prophets that are called hearers. There are prophets called seers. There are prophets that uh, are called feelers or knowers. And there are prophets that are called nebai. Now, a hearer prophet is the kind of prophet who hears from God. In other words, they hear from God either through a still small voice or an audible voice. We know this because God speaks, uh, when he speaks verbally, he speaks through a still small voice like he did with Elijah. Or he speaks through an audible voice like he did with Jesus where the apostles could even hear the thunderings. Okay. So these are different ways in which God speaks. We know that when he spoke to Moses, he spoke face to face. So he must have spoken with an audible voice. All right. The second kind of prophet is the one who sees. Okay. This is the seer anointing or the seer prophet. Okay. This type of prophet mainly sees in pictures, images, impressions, dreams, and visions. Amen. Um, uh, some kind of prophet this was, was the man called Daniel. Daniel as well as um, John the Revelator. These are people that were always seeing things. Ezekiel is one of them. Visions would open up and they would be able to see different things. You know. Uh, then there's a kind of prophet that feels or knows. In other words, this kind of prophet does not necessarily see, that does not necessarily hear, but they just kind of get a sense that God wants to say and do something. This is the way God uses me many times. 
is that I begin to get little impressions, little ideas, then I know God wants to begin to speak to different people, to do different things. All right. For example, we can see the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 2 of the book of Habakkuk. He set himself on a rampant to seek the face of God. In other words, there was a sense in him that God wanted to speak. Okay. So this is what we talk about when we speak about the office uh, of the seer, uh, or the feeler ministry, in fact. The fourth kind of prophet is the one who bubbles forth, is a Nebai prophet. What kind is a Nebai prophet? A Nebai prophet is a kind of prophet where it does not necessarily know if God wants to say something. Nope. But they don't necessarily know what the revelation is going to be, whatever God is going to be. But the minute they touch, they lay hands, they begin to speak, and thus said the Lord, many times is how they speak. And the Lord says, na, 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 na. They begin to bubble forth. The prophetic word begins to come out. A popular prophet in our days that is known for this is a prophet who's also called the father of prophets, Bishop Bill Hammond. Uh, so, for example, uh, there's a Psalm, in Psalm 81 in verse 10 where God says, uh, open your mouth and I will fill it. This is the kind of prophet that is being described here. You know, Jeremiah in chapter 20 spoke about him feeling a fire shut up in his bones. <laughs> he did not necessarily know what that word meant, but he just knew he carried a burden of the word of the Lord. So this is what we speak about when we speak about the prophet, uh, in particular, uh, the prophet that is able to bubble forth. All right. There are things we associate with the prophet. In other words, if the prophet has got four different ways of hearing, of sensing or knowing and bubbling forth, they are what we call prophetic operations. What are operations? Operations simply means how does the prophetic get passed on from place to place? Does it only get passed on because someone is in the office of the prophet? No. There are four main prophetic operations. All right. There's the spirit of prophecy, and this is when a believer is in the company of many prophets, or a believer is in a prophetic uh, atmosphere. And what begins to happen is, as a result of this, they themselves begin to catch the spirit of prophecy. They begin to catch that anointing, and they begin to prophesy as well. An example of this in the scripture was in 1 Samuel 10 and verse 10. Saul was never a prophet, but there was a time Samuel has sent him out, and he met a group of prophets and he started prophesying with them. Why? Because of the atmosphere. Number two, you have the spirit of prophecy, number one. Number two, you have the gift of prophecy. This is what we spoke about in, uh, in our last teachings. In 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 2, uh, verse 8 to 10 speaks about the nine kind of giftings. And one of them is the spirit, uh, the gift of the prophet, in fact. All right. So the prophetic gift usually is within the believer. Uh, you know, it, it, it comes and goes, it comes and goes, it's not as steady as the third level, which is the office of the prophet. Now, this is the highest level of which a human being can operate in the prophetic gift. In other words, this person does not need an environment. This person, the gift does not visit them. This person called the prophet has that gift constantly with them. And they can hear from God and activate their spirit to hear from God quite easily. So... Prophets carry the realm of the spirit anointing. They are able to see and perceive quite easily. There's the four kind of prophecy, the fourth kind of prophetic operation, which is the word of God. The word of God is prophetic. The Bible says in Revelation 19, verse 10, it says we, uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus has testified through the word. So what we're trying to say is that scriptures are more than mere history. You know, you're not reading stories here for the sake of fun. These words are always pregnant with something that can happen. So they are prophetic in that sense. Now let us look at the functions of the prophet. What exactly is this person called the prophet meant to do in the church, meant to do in the body of Christ? I'm glad you asked. And once again, I remind you that when we're talking about the prophet, we're not only talking about the office of the prophet, we're really talking about anyone who is prophetic. So in other words, you can be a pastor, you can just be a believer, but you can be prophetic in the sense that you are able to hear God, you're able to, to, to find out what God wants to say. Prophets are watchmen. What is a watchman? A watchman uh, comes from that Hebrew word in Isaiah 62 called Shammah. 
You know, we like to say Jehovah Shema, which means the God who sees. A watchman is like someone who's patrolling an area and looking. In other words, prophets are able to perceive what kind of attacks are going to come to the church of Jesus Christ. And prophets are given that ability once they see to begin to pray against it. Hallelujah. Listen to Isaiah 62 and verse 6. It says, I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. Glory to God. Number two, prophets identify gifts and callings. Now, you remember we spoke about this when we spoke about the office of the apostle, that apostles are able to also identify gifts and calling. It's the same thing with the prophet. You know, prophets are able to look into the realm of the spirit and to find out and say, okay, you have been called for such and such and such. You, God is outpouring dreams and visions on you. You, God is giving you the gift of this. You, God is done. Nah, 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 nah. How do I know this? It was the apostle Paul that spoke to Timothy, even though he was an apostle. He said he laid hands on him by prophesying. In other words, the gift of the prophetic and not the apostolic per se was the one that was able to identify the gifts and the callings in the, in the life of Paul. In the life of Timothy. Prophets are the ones that are given the grace by God to bring encouragement to the church. Why? You know, prophets are able to, to find out what the plans of the God are. And the plans of God most of the time is not doom and gloom. The plans of God most of the time is to offer encouragement and is to offer hope. All right? Now, prophets see the plans of God and they begin to show them and bringing excitement to the people of God. All right. Listen to Acts 15. It says, Now Judas and Silas themselves being prophets also exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. All right. The office of the prophet and the prophetic is general, is created to edify, to exhort and to comfort according to 1 Corinthians 3. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. God is not interested in coexisting with the devil. God is not interested in sharing territory with the enemy. One of them has to go. Light cannot mix with darkness, the scripture tells us that. The kingdom of God will require faith in order to manifest it. Now faith by its nature is forceful. Right, we're back and we're talking about the functions of the prophet. What is the function of the prophet? Now, we just spoke about the fact that a prophets by nature or are supposed to edify, to exhort and to comfort the church. You got to be careful when people call themselves prophets and all they are seeing most of the time is death and gloom and doom and judgment and you no. Know, Although God can show the prophet impending judgments, prophets, because, you know, God is excited. You know, God is always trying to reveal the plans he has for you. So prophets are the ones that kind of bring that comfort. You know, even if a prophet is to reveal um, a kind of a secret or something dirty that you're doing and uh, a mistake, it's always to help to rectify it and not to bring judgment upon you. All right. Number four, prophets, they counter spiritual voices that are false in these days. You know, we get the kind of life now where everybody is trying to find out what is their purpose and their destiny. So people are visiting uh, witches, people are visiting sangomas, if you're here in, in, in South Africa, people are visiting horoscopes, you know. Christians think that it is innocent to read uh, what a horoscope does, for example, to read that you are Pisces and Capricorn and this month is going to be a bad month. And no, you don't need the stars or any such nonsense to determine your life. You need the word of God. Amen. 
And sometimes you've got to be careful. If you've done that, you've opened yourself up to demonic activity in your life because all of those things are false worries of worshipping. You go back to history, you find out that finding destiny from the stars is a form of demonic worship. Now, when the prophet is come, the prophet is able to hear the heart of God and say, you, God has called you to start a business. You, God is going to restore your marriage. You, God is going to cause your children to leave drugs. So prophets are able to bring those voices of God, the true voice of God, so people don't have to wonder. So, and now again, this does not mean that we have to go looking for prophets to hear from God all the time. As we've talked about in chapter uh, one of the chapters of the book, How to Hear the Voice of God, is that you must be able to hear God for yourself in the sense when we say that every believer is prophetic. Every believer must be able to hear God. God, is this the job for me? God, should I be moving on from here? God, uh, which direction should I go from here? God, is this the woman to marry? God, is this the time to start a family? It's time to start a business. So we must be able to have the prophetic sense as well to hear the word of God for ourselves. All right. Prophets reveal the realm of the Spirit. Amos 3 verse 7 says that the Lord does nothing unless He first revealed it to His servants, the prophets. All right? In other words, for example, when, when people are about to be elected into power, when bad and catastrophic things are about to happen in the world, God is able to tell some prophets that are able to hear it and say this and this is going to happen so we can pray against it and we can limit its impact and so forth and so forth. Prophets are builders in the realm of the spirit. You know, when a prophet speaks, a genuine prophet, and they've heard the heart and mind of God, what they're beginning to do is they're beginning to set the plans of God in motion. Think about it. Jesus Christ himself, when he walked the earth, he validated his ministry. He spoke about his ministry according to what Isaiah had said, according to what Moses had said. In other words, the life of Jesus, the destiny of Jesus was being lived out even though it was spoken thousands and thousands of years ago. Why? God was using that prophetic word to begin to set in motion the plans and the purposes that he had for that time. You know, when prophets speak, God is able to move. You know, Jeremiah 1, 9 to 10 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to build down, to destroy, to throw down, to plant. God was saying to Jeremiah, Whatever you speak, I'm going to follow through and do. Okay? Number seven, God's judgment is done through prophets. Prophets will begin to declare, We already know. Uh, that the Antichrist is going to be judged. The false prophet is going to be judged. What's happening? God has already told us that the plans of God are being set in motion. That the judgment of God is going to happen through the prophets. Prophets help to determine the seasons of the church. You know, there are certain prophets that God has gifted that will say, Okay, now this is the time for revival in this country. Now God is going to be bringing healings of this kind to these people. Now God is saying it's time to restore this particular gift. Now God is saying he's raising up businessmen to do one, two, three. Prophets are able to speak that out. In other words, the other people are able to say, okay, the prophets have spoken. And therefore, we are now able to do that. Prophets are also foundational. You remember over in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20, um, this is what he says. He says that we've been built on the foundations. Whatever we're building has been built on the foundations of the apostle and the prophets. All right, prophets are foundational in that sense. We've already said that whatever, for example, like apostles, prophets hold a foundational office. Whatever they're revealing in that particular time, the apostles take it and begin to form teachings out of it and practices, and the teachers begin to give it to the people. And this is what we mean when we say the office of the prophet is foundational. Praise the Lord. Now, there's a grace that moves with the prophet. What is it? It's mainly the prophet, four prophetic gifts. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, uh, discerning of spirits, uh, the discernment of spirits, and prophecy. Word of knowledge, remember, is anyone that can know the past or the present of a situation. Word of wisdom is someone that will give us future a prophetic word saying this is how you solve that problem. Discerning of spirits is a prophetic ability to see 
is this a demon spirit operating here or a good spirit in terms of the Holy Spirit operating here? So, and then prophets obviously are able to prophesy, which means to speak the heart and the mind of God. As with false apostles, there is such a thing as false prophets. Okay, we got to watch out for false prophets. Uh, we got to test the spirits. We got to test the spirits as 1 John uh, reminds us. We got to be able to discern and say, this is of the God, this is not of God. So we're in a time where false prophets are going to begin to rise. And sometimes these false prophets are going to give accurate prophecies, accurate word of wisdom, accurate word of knowledge. And you're going to begin to wonder, but then you will begin, you will, by their fruit, you will know them. The minute they begin to drift away from this word, the minute they begin to glorify themselves or glorify a picture, glorify an item, glorify this, then you know those people are bordering on being a false prophet. Here are some errors and some false beliefs concerning the prophet. Some people say the prophet is the one that can hear God only. No. The Bible says all can prophesy. All can hear the word of God in John chapter 10. So that is false. Now there's this other concept that every believer must have a prophet over their life. Now this is a teaching especially that is very popular here in Africa. That when you are a person you must have a prophet over your life. No. That's not true. Why? This is a form of bondage. All right. Every believer should have pastors, should have mentors, should have people over their lives. Yes, but not necessarily a prophet. Okay. Prophets are human beings just like you and me. Sometimes a prophet's life will go into absolute chaos because they didn't hear God concerning that. Why? Because they don't own the gift. The gift still belongs to God. They are stewards of the gift. All right. So you've got to be careful of that. And remember, we encourage every person to be prophetic. Okay. There's another false teaching that says, whatever prophet says is true. No. Prophets are also able to get things wrong. This is a perfect gift operating in an imperfect human being. All right. I've received many false prophecies in my life. As I was growing in the prophetic, I have also given many false prophecies as I was growing and hearing the voice of God. So not everything that the prophet says is true. What are you going to say when someone says something? You're going to confirm it with the Holy Spirit. Then you're going to wait for people to confirm it around you. Then you know that God is speaking to you truly. There's this concept that prophets always have to prophesy. You know, Every time you see a prophet, give me a prophecy, give me a prophecy. No. Prophets themselves operate under gifting and they operate under the anointing. All right? Even though they easily prophesy, sometimes when you're pressuring a prophet for a prophecy, uh, what's happening? is that they're going to begin to want to do it out of their flesh and they're going to give you a false word. Amen. Some say prophets cannot contain themselves. They always have to prophesy. No, that's not true as well. The spirit of a prophet is subject to a prophet. If a prophet's got a word to say and is in the middle of a service, he can't just stand up and take the pastor's microphone. No, he must learn to control himself and prophesy when he is told to. Some people believe that prophets should speak in the old kind of language and the Lord says thus, and na 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 na, thy and thy, blah blah blah. No, in fact, the simpler the prophet speaks, the better. Amen. I know you've enjoyed this teaching on the prophet as much as I've enjoyed giving it. This is something that you need to go and reflect on. Like there are many people that are watching me now, you believe that God has called you to be a prophet. But what does that mean? Go back to the teachings, get the book, look at the scriptures, find out for yourself, and go deep as possibly as you can. All right. Now, if you're there and you're saying, I want to know this Jesus you're speaking about, just cry out and he will save you. Just say, Jesus, save my soul. Amen. And write to us and let us know what Jesus is doing for you. Amen. Right now, I want to pray for sicknesses and diseases. I want to pray for all men of oppressions in the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free, be loosed, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray God will meet you at that point of your need and that point of your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Remember, please let us know what the show is doing to you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Write to us. And this Apostle Abraham reminding you that the kingdom is in God is not interested in coexisting with the devil. God is not interested in sharing territory with the enemy. One of them has to go. Light cannot mix with darkness, the scripture tells us that. The kingdom of God will require faith in order to manifest it. Now faith by its nature is forceful.